This, this is my favorite brassiere. This is the only brassiere I own. This is an emergency brassiere. In an emergency, you can quickly separate it into two protective face masks. One to save your life, and one to save the life of some lucky bystander. Ah. The emergency bra was invented by Dr. Elena Bodnar. Dr. Bodnar grew up in Ukraine. As a young physician in Ukraine, she treated victims, many of them children, of the Chernobyl power plant meltdown. They stayed in touch, she and the other doctors, over the years, and they discovered that a tremendous part of the really bad medical damage came from particles in the air that people breathed in. And she kept thinking, if only there had been some simple filter, a mask, a piece of cloth, easily available that people had access to, Chernobyl might not have been such a horrible medical disaster. And that's why eventually she invented the emergency bra. We gave her an Ig Nobel Prize for that. I'll explain those in a little more detail, what the prizes are. At the Ig Nobel Prize ceremony, she demonstrated her invention with the kind assistance of three Nobel laureates. <laughs> uh, Wolfgang Ketterle, Orhan Pamuk, and Paul Krugman. <laughs> that may strike you as being improbable. Improbable means not what you expect. All research is improbable. All research is going to turn up some things you really didn't expect. If you are doing research and you know exactly what you're going to find, you're not doing research, you're doing marketing. <laughs> we started handing out Ig Nobel Prizes at a big ceremony in 1991. We give out 10 of these a year, and they are for things that make people laugh and then think. That's the sole criterion. Things that, when you first encounter them, they're funny. That's the only reaction you probably will have. And a week later, they're still rattling around in your head. And all you want to do a week later is tell your best friends about them. So that's the criterion for these. We get something like 9,000 new nominations every year for the Ig Nobel Prize. Consistently, between 10% and 20% of the nominations are people who nominate themselves. They, those self-nominees, almost never win. This is a side effect. If you try to win an Ig Nobel Prize, you're probably going to fail. The ceremony happens every year at Harvard University. It's in the biggest meeting place at Harvard. It's 1,100 people. People come from around the world to be in the audience. Press come. And up on stage, we present the prizes. The Ig Nobel Prizes are handmade. They're made to a different design every year. What's common is that they're always made from extremely cheap materials. <laughs> and up on the stage, waiting to greet the new Ig Nobel winners and shake their hands and hand them their prizes are a bunch of Nobel Prize winners. And there's a lot of other stuff that happens, too, at the ceremony. Here are a very few of the winners. Keep in mind, we've given 10 a year since 1991. We gave a prize to two doctors who explored and explained why woodpeckers don't get <laughs> headaches. Between them, they published several medical studies, one of which was called Woodpeckers and Head Injuries. The last few years, this research has been getting a lot more attention worldwide, as people have become worried about the brain injuries suffered by athletes who suffer repeated blows to the head. This is one of the uh, <laughs> winners at the Ig Nobel ceremony delivering his acceptance speech. We gave a prize a few years ago to two teams from different countries who discovered the same thing completely independently. Each of them published their own study about it. What they discovered was that herrings, little fish, apparently <laughs> communicate by farting. <laughs> the studies explain the details. One of the groups in Canada and Scotland, they set out to study herring, and so they discovered something about herring. The other group got involved for a different reason, in a different way. The other group was in Sweden. The Prime Minister of Sweden was convinced that the Soviet Union was sending submarines into Stockholm Harbor to spy on Sweden. And to prove this, he had the Swedish Navy put microphones underwater. They recorded a mysterious tapping sound. <laughs> and the Prime Minister had some of the best scientists in the country summoned. 
to bless this data before he told the public. And two fish biologists listened to it, and they said, in effect, yes, that's a fine recording you have, that's not submarines, that's herrings farting. <laughs> the prime minister wanted to announce that, no, it's submarines, and they said, go ahead, fine, if you do that, we're going to announce that it's not. And the <laughs> prime minister never announced that. <laughs> The winners came quite gleefully to the Ig Nobel ceremony. We gave a prize to Andre Geim and Michael Berry, two physicists, because they used magnets to levitate a frog. They published a study explaining how this works. The reason they did this was they rediscovered something about magnetism that few people knew, and most physicists, if they knew it, had forgotten. And they were worried that magnetism seems old-fashioned. The best physicists won't pay attention because it's so old hat. And so they decided, well, we'll do something that will get people's attention. <laughs> Andre Geim came to the Ig Nobel ceremony. This was in 2000. He's the one on the right. Uh, he received his Ig Nobel Prize. Ten years later, completely independently, there's, there's no connection between what I just said happened to him and what will happen to him. He got his Ig Nobel Prize in 2000 in physics. Ten years later, he was awarded a Nobel Prize in physics for something completely different. We gave a prize to three scientists who created diamonds from liquid. Specifically, they created diamonds from tequila. <laughs> They published a study about it, explaining how they did this. It was by evaporating and cooling things rapidly. The three scientists are from Mexico, and when they came to the ceremony, they passed out big Mexican hats and tequila. <laughs> Last year, we gave an Ig Nobel Prize to the SKN Company of Russia, which I would bet none of you have heard of. The SKN Company won for converting old Russian ammunition into new diamonds. Their method was different. They use explosions. The president of the company flew at his own expense from Russia to Harvard, where he held up a big diamond that was not a diamond they made. The diamonds they make are microscopic. Same for the, the diamonds that the Mexicans made by a different method. We gave a prize to seven Australian scientists who published a study called An Analysis of the Forces Required to Drag Sheep Across Various <laughs> Surfaces. Let me read that to you again. Their report is called An Analysis of the Forces Required to Drag Sheep Across Various Surfaces. They live in a part of Australia where sheep is a big industry, and every year thousands of sheep are brought to a huge building and brought in to have the wool sheared off. Sheep don't always move where you want them to, when you want them to, and the shearing instruments are big and dangerous. So there's a lot of money involved and a lot of danger involved. The industry asked these scientists to improve the process, and eventually they won an Ig Nobel Prize. We gave a prize to three biologists who determined by experiment that microbes cling <laughs> to bearded scientists. They published a study called Microbiological Hazard of Bearded Men. The study is filled with photographs showing you how they conducted this research. They work in Fort Detrick, Maryland. In the United States, Fort Detrick is the place where things like anthrax and ricin are brought, anything truly dangerous and biological. It's brought there for analysis. So this question matters to them. They came up with some new safety guidelines. It turns out, yes, beards do collect these things. Their safety guidelines now, 40 years later, are essentially the safety guidelines used in laboratories around the world that deal with these kinds of dangerous materials. Well, that's everything I brought to show you. I want to leave telling you the exact same thing that I say at the very end of every Ig Nobel ceremony each year. If you did not win an Ig Nobel Prize, and especially if you did, better luck next year. <laughs> <laughs>